Hebron, one of the world's oldest cities. Hebron, birthplace of the nation of Israel. 4,000 years ago, Hebron was the home of Avraham Avinu, the patriarch Abraham. It was here that his son Yitzchak was born, and it was here that he paid a considerable sum to acquire the cave of Machpelah, the burial site of Avraham and Sarah, Yitzchak and Rivka, Yaakov and Leah. The scouts that Moshe sent to survey the land of Israel, including Yehoshua bin Nun and Kalev ben Yefune, came to Hebron. David established his kingdom in Hebron and reigned for seven years before proceeding to Jerusalem. At the temple in Jerusalem, they awaited sunrise in Hebron to determine when to begin their daily work. This is a Herodian structure built 2,000 years ago. What other nation has such a monument? It has no parallel. There is no such thing anywhere else. Where else would you find all the founders of a nation buried in one place thousands of years ago? Abraham and Sarah, Yitzchak and Rivka, Yaakov and Leah. There is nothing like it anywhere in the world. All Jews should come here. Every Jewish child must visit here. Every tourist has to be brought here. The first place I would bring all foreign representatives visiting Israel would be right here. This is the source of our roots. Jewish settlement in Hebron never ceased. Even after the destruction of the temple and throughout two millennia of exile, Jews lived in Hebron despite difficulties, restrictions, persecution, and humiliation. 1929, the Arabs of Hebron massacre their Jewish neighbors, killing, slaughtering, raping, and torturing Jews alive, and desecrating their bodies after murdering them. All attempts at returning to Hebron failed. 1967, the Six-Day War. The Israel Defense Forces liberate Hebron. IDF Chief Chaplain Rabbi Shlomo Goren and General Rechavam Zevi enter the cave of Machpelah, from which Jewish presence had been barred for 700 years. Jews return to Hebron, return to their roots. The cave of Machpelah again reverberates with the prayers of hundreds of thousands of Jews from all over the world. It is not easy to live in Hebron. Facing a hostile and fanatic Arab population, Israeli government opposition or hesitancy, the Jews who return display much self-sacrifice. It is this sense of mission and sacrifice on the part of the Jewish community of Hebron, this determination to return to the city of the patriarchs and matriarchs that tip the scales. Jews were killed and injured by the Arabs of Hebron, but the Jewish community grew and flourished in 2003, an Arab sniper fired at the infant Shalhevet Pass. Shalhevet was killed and her father wounded. Her death and her funeral outraged the Jewish world. Grieving for its losses, the Jewish community of Hebron held its ground, more determined than ever to remain and flourish. Near the Avraham Avinu neighborhood, the Arab market set up on Jewish land after 1929 was evacuated. The shops became homes for young couples whose children will grow up to be proud Hebron Jews with God's help. The Grabovskis are one such family. Hebron is, is unexplainable uh, place. You live here because you think it's important. It's important for your soul, it's important for the people, it's important for Am Israel. To live in Hebron, you need spiritual strength. In this respect, the women of Hebron, well known for their wisdom and courage, are a vital human resource. Here women are very active in making this possible, making the redemption of Hebron a reality now. Hebron is, is crucial to the Jewish people, so women are certainly at the forefront of something that is so crucial. Rabbanit Miriam Levinger, together with her husband, Rabbi Moshe Levinger, headed the campaign to move into Beit Hadassah, abandoned in the heart of Hebron since the 1929 massacre. Despite Arab objections and Israeli bureaucratic obstacles, they fulfilled their mission, eventually establishing a Jewish neighborhood with dozens of growing families. We told the men to prepare uh, the, the territory, and we got on a truck, and we took our children with us, and we went down to Hebron, 
and we to, yes, we moved into the Beit Hadassah building. At the time, I was sure that within 24 hours, either they would give us permission to live in Hebron, or they would force us to go back to Kiryat Arba. What I didn't expect was that Beit Hadassah would turn into a spaceship in which we would travel for the next two and a half years. Hebron's Jews faced numerous obstacles. Economic hardship, political issues and security problems, such as the Oslo Accords that ceded most of Hebron to Arafat and his cronies, or the tendency of most Israel governments to withdraw, concede and give in to pressure. The Jewish community of Hebron has taken full responsibility for restoration of Jewish life, ensuring steady construction momentum, deep and sincere faith, natural population growth, constant expansion, urban development, and superior education for Hebron's hundreds of Jewish children. Kindergartens and schools are filled to capacity. The joyful sounds of Torah study echo through the streets of Hebron. Yeshivat Shaveh Hebron began by renovating a small Jewish-owned building that had been abandoned and neglected since 1929. Today it has hundreds of students and is considered one of the most prestigious yeshivas in the Torah world. At Admot Yishai, Tel Romeda, the Jewish community of Hebron established a rabbinic college at the home of the late Rabbi Shlomo Ra'anan, who was murdered right in his home, stabbed to death by an Arab marauder. Rabbi Moshe Levinger conducts lessons for young rabbis. There is no despair in the world at all, said Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. Hebron's Jews know and live by this principle. The Arabs of Hebron are notorious for their fanaticism and cruelty. Friction and physical proximity necessitated marked military presence by the IDF. Hebron men perform their IDF reserve duty in combat units. They and their families maintain a close friendship with the soldiers who guard Hebron. IDF soldiers are regular guests at homes of Hebron residents. Several coffee corners were set up throughout the area, offering hot drinks and cake, especially prepared for soldiers by the women of Hebron. Tell Romeda. At this coffee corner, you can see the old coffee urn, damaged by Arab gunfire in one attack on the site. The old urn is riddled with bullet holes, and the new one is busy at work. When the first families began coming to Hebron, many people doubted they would persevere. Today, there's a waiting list of dozens of families eager to move into every available spot. The Jewish community of Hebron is expanding Jewish neighborhoods, buying up houses and land. Soon they'll acquire this entire street with all its shops, ensuring Jewish continuity between the cave of Machpelah and the Avraham Avinu neighborhood, and from there to Beit Hadassah. With God's help, they will soon begin construction of an eight-story building with 30 apartments in the Chizkiyahu neighborhood. The presence 